he shall be shut up when it's I <laughs> who am mad. <laughs> but, but nobody knows that, excepting you and me. Mad Love was a black and white horror thriller movie from 1935 that starred Peter Lorre at his finest. This film is straight up nuts, and I love it. And to me, it's probably Peter Lorre at his craziest. He plays a surgeon here who has this, these weird obsessions. I'll get to those in just a minute. And crazy shifts in his personality. And what I think is so great here is he's got this bald head and these piercing eyes. And he just looks like a lunatic in this movie. Now, he isn't just straight up crazy, though, because his personality will shift in the film. You know, he's a surgeon and he's about to operate on a child. And one minute he's like, let me help make you better, little child, you know. And then the next minute he's telling another doctor, forget this provincial fool. I have my own schemes, you know. He's all over the board with just his crazy character. And, you know, what really adds to some of the freakiness is when he's in a surgical garb and he's got the surgeon's outfit and his mask on his face and his head and his eyes are just piercing out. It is great. Um, you know, Peter Lorre to me is an amazing, versatile actor, but I think he is in his finest form when he's playing these creepy characters, these over-the-top wild lunatics. <laughs> I love this movie. So let me give a rundown of the plot. The film opens up, it's in France, and we're at this theater of horrors, which is sort of a, it's a live show, sort of like an old-fashioned Halloween Horror Nights show you'd see at Universal Studios, you know, where they do the pretend killing and torture and mayhem on stage. And so I guess even back in the 1930s, that was still a thing. And the character of Yvette is introduced. She's one of the actresses in this film as she's, you know, being tortured in this play night after night. And she is played by an actress named Frances Drake. Not to be confused with the Frances Drake who circumnavigated the world in a single expedition in 1577 to 1580. No, uh, Frances Drake was an actress I looked up. I'm not seen in any of my uh, old film explorations. I thought she did a fine job here playing opposite of Peter Lorre. So she is in this show. After it, she is greeted by Dr. Gogol is the name of Peter Lorre's character. I mean, it's a perfect name. You know, I love it. It just fits him perfectly. And he is shocked to find out that she is leaving the show to move to England with her husband. He didn't know she was married or anything. And he basically loses it and he leaves. But not without first purchasing the wax replica of her to keep in his house. Because, you know, that's not weird or anything. So her husband is played by Colin Clive. And I thought this was awesome that he was in this film. Colin Clive, as you remember, is immortally known as Dr. Frankenstein himself. You know, it's alive! Well, that's him, Colin Clive. So he is in this film. Uh, he's introduced to us as he's traveling on a train, and while he's on this train ride, it crashes and his hands are mutilated. Now, he is a concert pianist, so he needs his hands, obviously. So, wouldn't it figure there's a train crash and his hands of everything have to get mutilated? So, Dr. Gogol, back to him. Meanwhile, he's out watching the decapitation of a murderer named Rollo the Knife Thrower, played by Edward Brophy. You know, because, again, to watch a decapitation in public, that's not weird or anything. I guess whenever the film was set, it was in France and they were still doing guillotine executions. So... He's watching that. Back over to the other side of the story, Yvette hears about her husband and the train crash and his mutilated hands. And knowing that Dr. Gogol, our friend Peter Lorre, is the famous surgeon, she has her husband rushed over to his house to see if she can plead with him to have him do this you know, emergency surgery to try to fix his hands. So Dr. Gogol agrees and... This is where the film really sort of gets a little bit weird. So Dr. Gogol has this 
nutty idea of using the hands of Rolo, the dude who just had his head cut off, using his hands for a transplant. So, you know, and I thought this was really ironic, if you think about it, because here's Colin Clive, this actor who plays Dr. Frankenstein, who made his business on stitching body parts together and reanimating. Well, here, ironically, he's the recipient of a mad scientist grafting body parts onto him. (laughs) I guess... Yeah, I don't know. I guess in a way, this was one of the first examples of body horror. It's not really my favorite genre of cinema, but it's it's done effectively here. You know, the idea of having creepy killer hands sewn on to your body is pretty much flat out disturbing. But, you know, Colin Clive seems okay afterward. They do some recovery. They help strengthen his hands. And, you know, after getting special treatments to get his hands and the muscles working because they've atrophied and so on. He's back to being able to use them again. But here's where the challenge comes in. He now seems to be unable to play the piano. However, he's suddenly really good at throwing knives. So, Clive and his wife continue to lose money with all of these bills and so on. And Dr. Gogol, he continues to make advances on a vet which, of course, are all spurned because, you know, he's creepy. And he starts going even more crazier. So he gets this idea in his head that he's going to try to make Clive, Colin Clive go crazy. So he goes ahead and he dresses up in this freaky, freaky outfit with thick glasses, a hat, this thick neck brace, and metal hands. And he secretly sends a message to Colin Clive to meet with him. And they meet together, and he starts to share with him these bogus ideas that he's got the murderer's hands and he's going to go crazy and stuff to try to, you know, drive him out of the picture so he has a better chance with Yvette. So Yvette kind of figures out what's going on. She goes off to confront Gogol, and at one point she's in his house, and This is when Gogol comes back. He's still got his crazy costume on, and he's laughing hysterically, and he's talking to himself like insane people do, you know, with lots of exposition of all of his actions. And what had happened was, you know, Yvette bumped into her wax duplicate and accidentally smashed it on the ground. So she has to pretend to be the wax statue, So it just gets wackier. So Dr. Gogol comes back in and he sees Yvette standing really still, thinks it's his wax statue, and starts talking to it. And I loved how at this particular moment, the scene is just filled with this Hitchcock-style tension. He thinks it's a statue. And he's talking away and she's just trying to stand still while this lunatic just rants and raves. And, you know, this is getting near to the end of the film. I'll let you check out the rest. It's amazing. And honestly, it really does have a a Hitchcock-style twist at the end, too. And like I said before, this film is nuts. And I loved it. Peter Lorre is amazing. And honestly, I think this is my new favorite film by him. Because he's just bonkers in this film. And again, I love seeing Colin Clive again. Because he's in a role here where he's going mad, wondering about his hands and so on. And it was a fun twist seeing him be made into this reanimated monster, if you will. Frances Drake was fine as well. And like I said, I haven't seen her in anything else, but I think she does a great job as this love interest of this tortured, insane Peter Lorre character. And also noteworthy was the actress Mae Betty as Francois, I think her name was, who was... Gogol's basically perpetually drunk housekeeper. (laughs) I actually found her hilarious. There's particularly a scene when she runs off screaming because she thinks that, you know, Gogol's wax figure has come to life. This was around the time when Yvette was acting like the statue. So she goes running off screaming and gets arrested. (laughs) This film is one of those weirdly disturbing pre-code era films that, you know, to be honest... The psychological aspect is a little dark. It might not be ideal for younger viewers. There's not really any gore, necessarily. But there is a psychological twistedness going on. 
and there's some great performances and a freaky story. And definitely this one is worth checking out. And a final note, if you are someone who has remembered watching Ren and Stimpy back in the 1990s, you can help but catch some of the references that Ren Hoek used in a few episodes, such as uh, lines of dialogue, Alive, I tell you, alive! Flesh and blood, not wax! Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's basically taken from this film when Dr. Gogol's talking to his wax statue. And, of course, the It is not I who am crazy, it is I who am mad! Yeah, that's when Ren was talking to his his soap ice cream bar but that's taken from this as well when dr gogol is confessing to his madness and the voice is very similar it's actually kind of funny (laughs) when you hear him say these particular lines if you grew up watching ren and stimpy so i think ren was just channeling dr gogol here it's a great film worth checking out She come here now. Flesh and blood, not wax like you. 